that was one bite. This right here makes this entire day of barbecuing in 105, 107 degree, whatever, so worth it. Mm. Tender, juicy, delicious. Mm. <laughs> Barbecue. Seems like it's been, for whatever reason, gaining in popularity lately. There's all kinds of TV series about it and everything. And it's kind of awesome because it's kind of something that, that anybody can do. But I've also learned not to take for granted that it is something that, that anybody can do. Not all of us uh, had the opportunity to grow up in a, in a situation where we, you know, mom or dad could teach us how to cook over an open flame or, or we were even in a place where we could. I mean, it's kind of hard to do if you grow up on the fifth floor of a, of a tall apartment building or something too, you know, and, and yeah, even if you live in, this, in, the, in the city, you still have an opportunity to go to like the park and, and barbecue on the, the public grills out there or have your own that you take out somewhere, go camping or whatever. But um, how do you get started? You know, um, it, it's uh, it can be a little daunting. You're you're talking about fire and and food, and you're wondering about whether or not it you know things are sanitary. You're going to burn stuff. You know, how do you you get it lit? You know, and all this stuff. There's there's a lot to it, but um, it's a lot of fun, and um, it's something that if you get comfortable with it, it's something that you can experiment with, and you can come up with all kinds of cool stuff, and it's it's awesome. And you know what? It's a great way to, to relax in your backyard or at the park or at the campground or, or wherever you have the space to do it and enjoy a drink and, and uh, cook some food. And um, me personally, I, I prefer cooking with, with real fire from, from natural wood or from coal, lump coal or charcoal. And um, you know I, I like having to actually tend the fire. I like being involved in it. I like the smoke. Um, I like the heat and what you're about to see in this video might look like a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work trying to do this while videoing and, and manip you know, man manually, you know, manipulating the camera and all this stuff. You know, I, I personally, I don't have a, a camera crew. Um, I don't have a professional set. And um, my goal here for you is to make this video as much as like, as much like you actually being here hanging out with me during the cook, you know, live, like real time, just, you know, we're here cooking and I'm kind of explaining what I'm doing. That's what I'm trying to accomplish with this video. There's no script, there's no retakes, there's no, it's, it's pretty much what happens happens and, and I record it. And um, the day that I made this video initially, it was 109 degrees and that even caused some problems because my video camera shut off because it just got too hot. So there's a couple spots in here that you'll notice where I had to uh, uh, basically kind of like recreate a couple of, of um, very key, very important parts of the video. And uh, so what I'm going to show you right now is an entire video, uh, I mean an entire cook process start to finish um, about how to prep this uh, offset smoker, how to um, actually maintain your temperature and how to how to smoke slow, slow and low some ribs how to uh, use the side firebox on this particular smoker to do some some searing of some of a tri-tip and then how to use the main cooking chamber as uh, your your normal direct heat like a, like much like you would with a Weber kettle or something like that to uh, to cook some some chicken legs and uh, I'm kind of like trying to show you it all. It's a really long video, so if you can make it all the way through it, you're freaking awesome. Um, I really just want to go through the whole cooking process and have you follow along so you can see everything that I do. And along the way, I'm going to kind of try to do my best to describe um, the tools, the, the process, the, the thought behind things, so that um, maybe it's something that hopefully it answers a lot of your questions about, about how to do things, why to do things, whatever. So um, crack open a cold one or pour yourself a drink, kick back, relax, and uh, enjoy. I, I really hope this is something that's, that's helpful for you. Cheers. Hey, welcome to my channel. My name's Tony, and this is another episode of Real At Home Barbecue. 
I've got something real special for you today. About a year ago, I posted a video called How to Build a Fire in Your Offset Smoker Firebox. And uh, I wasn't expecting this, but that video got a ton of views and a ton of great questions and a lot of great comments and a few really stupid comments. But uh, anyways, I wasn't really expecting that. And I thought what I wanted to do today is remake that video and really go over, um, try to answer all those questions and kind of go over some of those comments and try to really give you a lot of really detailed information. So if you're newer to uh, offset smoking and barbecuing, um, this is a great video for you. If you're already into it and you're, you're and you just want to perfect your skills, this is, could be some really good information for you too. Got a lot of great tips on how I make this uh, rig work really well for me. Um, you know, or if you're even thinking about getting into it, this is something you're definitely going to want to watch. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to cook three different things, three different ways basically. I'm doing some, I'm smoking some pork ribs first of all. I'm going to do baby back ribs. I'm going to smoke those, uh, the kind of traditional uh, uh, slow and low. I'm going to do a couple hours of smoke and then a couple, you know, another couple hours wrapped. I'm not going to get too much into the uh, recipes or anything like that today. I'm really talking more about the mechanics, but I'm going to start with the, the, uh, the pork spare ribs. I'm also going to do at the same time, I'm going to work in a reverse sear steak, well actually reverse sear tri-tip. So I'm going to bring a tri-tip up to temperature and then I'm going to sear it. I'm going to show you how you can use the side fire box for that. And then I'm going to transition into some direct heat cooking, some direct heat grilling it's just on some, uh, some chicken drumsticks. And I don't know, I might throw some other stuff on there in the process, but those are basically the three different ways you can use this grill that I'm going to show you. So uh, I'm going to also going to show you a lot of things about the grill, a lot of the tools that I use, different types of fuel, and I'm going to be kind of going over this as I'm actually going through the process of cooking. So hang in there and watch this, and I'm about to fire this up. All right, let's get started. Before we do, uh, just a little reminder, uh, if you uh, find this video helpful, I uh, appreciate a thumbs up. If you think it's really stupid, give me a thumbs down. I'm cool with that too. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that uh, little notification bell so you know when I post new stuff because I got more of this coming, all right? So what I've got underneath this cover right here is the Char Griller Smoking Champ. Let's get it unwrapped. I like to keep it covered, keep the dust off of it. This thing actually sits out here all winter and uh, the cover keeps it protected, decent vinyl cover. I had a lot of questions on my previous video, a lot of comments about this grill. So this is the Char Griller Smoking Champ, as I said. This is designed to be used really three ways. You've got your main cooking chamber here for smoking You've got your firebox over here that could be used a couple different ways, but this is where you're gonna build your fire. And you can also put coals right down in here. There's another charcoal grate down underneath here where you can put coals for direct grilling. Now, if you notice, nice little echo there. If you notice, my grates here are a little dirty. We've got grease and barbecue sauce and crustiness from my last cook. And I wanna talk about that real quick. I do that on purpose. After every cook, I always make sure just to leave the grates greasy and saucy and dirty. Why do I do that? Is because it helps prevent this right here. Here's a grate that doesn't really get a whole lot of use, and that's a little tiny bit of rust building up there. That's not a big deal. I do use this enough to try to keep the rust down, but if you leave it greasy, the grease actually helps protect the grate. Now you might say, oh, that's unsanitary, that's kind of gross. No. So what you're going to do, I'm going to demonstrate here also, is before you start cooking, you're going to get the sucker up to nice and hot and get these grates smoke and scalding hot. And then you scrub it and uh, that sanitizes it and keeps it nice and clean and healthy. So let me show you some of the functions of this, of this uh, barbecue here. Got a cool little device here to help grab these grates off, which comes in handy when they're hot. Now, inside the cooking chamber, you've got another little grate rack here. And this rack is for putting other stuff up top here, whatever you want, potatoes, meat, whatever. Um, there's normally a couple little screws that go right here, a couple little, little bolts that go on the ends of these threads here. And I actually leave those off, so that way I can do this. Go like that and easily remove this 
which comes in really handy when you're doing like a turkey or a really big pork shoulder. Something that uh, is kind of fat because I found out once that if you try to close the lid with this grate on there and you got something really big and thick on there, then this will actually kind of squish on top of it and uh, makes things difficult. So the charcoal grate inside here is adjustable, which is a nice little feature. So you can move this up to get the charcoal a little closer to the grate surface if you're cooking with charcoal, doing some direct grilling. I'm gonna take this out, show you what's underneath. Underneath, got the barrel there. I don't do much to maintenance this. So this unit here is a couple years old now. I use it like every week. Like I said, it sits out here. And um, decent metal, pretty solid, does a nice job. I'm showing you all this because there's been some questions and I think this is important. So that's the main cooking chamber. All right, I'm gonna put the grates, the grates back on. Now this is the firebox. So people were wondering what these two grates are here that I'm taking out right now. So these grates, usually I don't have them in there. What these are for is you can put charcoal or wood or whatever you want here on the charcoal grate. Let me pull that out. This drawer actually comes out. And this is where you put your wood, your charcoal, your lump coal, whatever. And that fire going in there clears this lid and all the heat, smoky air is going to come through here, up into here and exit out your exhaust port right there. Now, what you can do, as long as this isn't built up too tall, you can put these grates in here, get those nice and hot. And it comes in handy as another small little barbecue where if you want, you can maybe throw some hot dogs down on there, throw some hamburgers down on there. Maybe if you're smoking some ribs or, or brisket or a pork shoulder or something over here and you want to throw on a little snack for the kids or something like that, you can put some stuff down in there. I also like to use it for when I'm doing a reverse sear on a steak or on a tri-tip like I'm going to show you today. When you have the uh, that piece of meat in here getting up to temperature, then I will take that. I will uh, put these grates in here, let them get nice and hot right above the fire. And that's where I'll take that steak or that tri-tip like I'm going to do later today and put it right there. And just hear it sizzle and sear and burn for just a few seconds. Then take that off and it comes out beautiful and perfect and delicious. But uh, normally, if I'm going to be smoking something for a long time. I'm going to take that out. I want to show you something here. This drawer here, this is the grate you want to want to have a grate inside here to uh, put the wood on top of so the wood or charcoal or whatever you're working with can breathe. I just want to show you this is the grate that it came with. And this works fine too. I actually use this for a little, really long time. You can see it got really hot and it kind of warped and bent a little bit. Still works fine. I know some guys like to take this and flip it over. So it creates a little extra space. Like that. That works fine too. Personally, what I did is I found this old grade off of a rusty old, uh, gas grill that we didn't need anymore and it happened to be the right length it was just a little bit too wide so i just cut off the last couple pieces it stuck out about this far just cut that off and uh found out that this thing works really nicely to have a nice flat surface in there to let plenty of airflow come up underneath and you're gonna see how it works a little bit slide that drawer in there okay 
you got your air intake vent over here. I pretty much never close that. That's wide open all the time. All right, so that's one little modification that I made to this uh, char griller smoking chip. Another thing that I did is I applied some barbecue gasket, some smoker gasket to this lid here all the way around. It was really easy to do. All I did was uh, give it a quick little wipe down and uh, cut these strips to the right length and just put them on there, kind of like double face tape. So that way when I close it up, it doesn't leak any smoke out of here. It doesn't let a bunch of extra heat come out through the little tiny gap in the door there. It wasn't much, but a little tiny bit was coming out. That helped out a lot. Another thing I did is I applied some of that gasket also right here to the underside of the lid. It's kind of hard to see because I did that a long time ago. But I applied that gasket here. I applied it right down the side here. And I applied it down the side over here. And I also applied some along the edge here. And there's actually two products here. You got the gasket and you've got some, uh, some high temperature barbecue silicone sealant. I'm going to show you both those products here in a second. But I applied that here and here. And I also applied a couple layers of that gasket back here. You can see where this one's kind of rolled up a little bit. And I let it do that. But there's like two or three layers back here where I literally just put like one layer on. And then I put another layer on on top of it. And then another layer on on top of that. So that way, when this lid is closed, like this, you can see it forms a really nice seal. Because when I first assembled this, when I first assembled this, there was a little bit of smoke rolling out the back over here. Not a whole bunch, but a little bit of smoke was coming out of here, and I didn't want that. The reason I didn't want that is because mostly it makes it difficult to keep your temperature up. If smoke is coming out of here, all that that that's hot air that's coming out of your chamber here um, makes it difficult to keep the temperatures where you want it. Okay. So that's why I did that, and you'll see it worked out pretty good. Another comment that I had on this was that um, people were concerned about the quality of this smoker. And I'll tell you, I got this at Home Depot, spent about $200 on it. And, man, for, tell you what, for $200, this is a pretty awesome unit for $200. This is a giant barbecue that is a smoker... And uh, my, my, my beautiful camera girl almost almost lost it right there and <laughs> <laughs> fell on her booty. <laughs> Anyways, this, this smoker is pretty awesome for 200 bucks. You really can't beat the quality of it. But people made some comments about some rust that was building up over here. Well, you know what? Rust happens. What happened is uh, I let this thing get really, really hot when I first started using it. And it literally burnt the paint off the surface of it. Yeah, no big deal. What I found was found this rust-oleum high heat this is for engine blocks up to 2,000 degrees and applying it was super easy all I did was take a wet rag and give it a quick scrubbing like that and then sprayed it on there and that was it my goal wasn't to make it look like a brand new you know classic car or something like or that doesn't make any sense like a brand new car or a classic or anything like that I just wanted to get some paint on it to prevent any rust from coming on. I did that several weeks ago, and it's still been sitting out here. And you know what? It looks great. And um, no problems there. So what? The paint burnt off a little bit, but the metal is plenty heavy. You don't have to worry about any rust coming through there. I've done nothing to the inside of this thing, and it's been burning a lot of wood in there, and a lot of charcoal and everything else. And no, there's no holes, nothing's rusted through, everything is completely intact. It's actually some pretty decent steel. And uh, does a hell of a job of cooking. I've made a lot of amazing barbecue with this rig. So, about that, about that smoking gas I was talking about. So, this is what I was talking about. I got this off of uh, Amazon, and I'm gonna post links to a lot of this stuff on here because a lot of people are asking, where'd you get this stuff? This um, was from Amazon, from uh, Outdoor Island, 
I'm sorry, Island Outdoor LLC. I'll post their link to the uh, on the uh, to Amazon on my video comments down below. So what this is is uh, the uh, smoker gasket. It looks just like double face tape. You just peel this off, and this adhesive on this product actually worked really, really good. I didn't have to clean the barbecue or anything. I just gave it a quick wipe down and stuck that on there, and I didn't stick this on there until after the first few cooks when I realized that uh, it would probably perform better if it wasn't leaking uh, air. And then also, this is the um, Lava Lock RTV 650 high temperature silicone. And by the way, this is Lava Lock gasket. So this product, I used this when I assembled it. So this is something that I did consider before I put this barbecue together. And you can see where I put it. Put it right here around the smokestack. So that way it wouldn't let leak, and it wouldn't let the smoke leak out of here. And I also put it between the firebox and the main cooking chamber in here. I just put a nice big bead of it on there. Then I put it and bolted it together. And then I also used it to fill up where any other little screws went through the cooking chamber just to make sure smoke wasn't leaking out of there. You really can't see that it's there now, but uh, it's there and it doesn't let any smoke leak out. And then I used it just to set on top of this, this um, piece of, of uh, gasket that I applied here just to make sure that when this lid came down it kind of sat right on top of there to create a little extra sealant so this is interesting because it's not like glued to anything it's literally just a bead that I stuck on the surface of this gasket just to give it an even better seal and you know what with every cook with a little bit of smoke going through there and building and you know your your stuff building up it kind of gets even more and more sealed so those are those two products I'm going to post so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you the simplest and easiest way to build a fire in your offset smokers firebox. And um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this. This is the Weber charcoal chimney starter. You can put in charcoal or lump coal. Um, I hear some guys put in wood, I've never done that. But uh, it's a really simple, easy thing to use. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this I'm going to wad up some, some paper out of my waste paper basket in my office. You can use paper towels, newspaper, whatever. Um, but just wad up some paper, stick that in there. No oil or anything like that. No lighter fluid. I'm just going to put in a bunch of paper underneath there. Kind of pack it as much as I can. I'm going to set it here. I'm going to fill it with some lump coal. And I'm going to light that fire and that lump coal is going to take off. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to dump that lump coal right there on that grate. I'm going to put some wood on it. And I'm going to get this thing up to temperature. All right. So here we go. All right, before we light that fire, let's talk about fuel a little bit. I mentioned lump coal a second ago, but let me show you the things that I use here because I use a little bit of an array. So first of all, classic charcoal. This is just your regular Kingsford charcoal. Use this for uh, a lot of my cooks. This kind of depends on what I'm going to be doing. So that's charcoal. I got a bag of lump coal. Lump coal is more like your burned down natural wood. Um, this is the Frontier brand picked up at Home Depot. Actually, it's a pretty decent product, but uh, basically it's just wood that's already burnt down for you. You've also got regular wood. Now, this product is the Kingsford Hickory Logs that uh, you can also get at Home Depot. This is a great product. Um, one cubic foot usually runs, I think it's about 25 bucks off the top of my head, I don't remember. Um, most of these logs for this particular barbecue are a little bit big. So you might want to have to cut these down a little bit. Um, nice product, convenient, and they have a few different flavors. They also sell the uh, chunks. Chunks are great. Uh, I definitely use the chunks a lot more than the logs. Got to remember that the um, smaller the piece of wood, the quicker it's going to burn down these uh, bags of chunks you'll notice a variety of different sizes in there kind of nice thing about that is sometimes you need a bigger piece and sometimes you need a smaller piece and another product they sell is chips this is the Kingsford cherry chips and chips are just like it sounds chips are the things that I probably use the least but I do use them every now and then especially if I'm just cooking something uh, direct heat over charcoal and I want to add a little bit of smoky wood flavor to that I might throw a couple of handfuls of chips on there 
I don't ever soak any of these before I use them. I always want the wood that I'm going to be burning to stay to be nice and dry so it cleans nice and, and so it burns nice and hot and clean. Now my favorite is actual real firewood that I pick up from a local distributor. This is cherry. Uh, the distributor that I go to also carries oak and sometimes has various different woods that you can use for cooking. Um, now this log is way too big for this smoker. Let me demonstrate here. If I tried to put this thing in here, it would barely fit. It doesn't really fit. So this is way too large for that size smoker box. If you have a really big offset smoker, then this would be okay. But in this case, I'm gonna need to cut this down. Now, I like using wood from the local distributor for a couple reasons. Um, mainly though, is I can get five cubic feet of it for 35 bucks. Yeah, I gotta cut it down, but now I can cut it down to whatever size I want it to be. So I end up with pieces more like this and this. So, tell you what, real quick, I'm gonna demonstrate how I cut this down. It's pretty simple. I actually just do it right here. Grab a little scrap wood, some scrap plywood here. With today's plywood prices, this is probably about a $50 piece of plywood. <laughs> but it's garbage and I just use a uh, reciprocating saw like this go down here like that there you go resized piece of wood now sometimes uh, this one's actually a pretty decent piece of wood I like to make different sizes so one thing I might do, if I want something a little bit thinner than this, I might split it. Splitting it's pretty easy. Regular old camping axe. There you go. Smaller piece of wood. So if you got a little saw like that and a little axe like that and some junk uh, scrappy pieces of plywood and you can take wood like this and chop it down to whatever size you want and i like that a lot because that way i can control the sizes of the uh, splits i'm going to be using in my smoker so what i'm going to do right now when i light the fire in this one for the ribs is i'm going to fill a chimney full of the lump charcoal you see inside there as you can see those are the big pieces that came out the top, but most of it looks more like this. So I'm going to fill that uh, chimney starter with this stuff, throw the paper underneath, and uh, get it lit up. Going to get that fire going. Then I'm going to put some of this, uh, these uh, splits on that so we create a nice hot fire with a lot of good smoke flavor. Good. All right, I've got my charcoal chimney starter here upside down. Wadded up a bunch of garbage paper. Okay, flip that over. You can put this thing on whatever surface you want to put it on. Uh, my little trick is just to use it right here where the charcoal is going to go anyways. On this drawer, leave it slid out. Add your lump coal or your charcoal. Get that in there like that. Right. Now you can use a match or lighter or whatever you I prefer a little blowtorch. And you'll just light the paper underneath. That way we're not using any of that nasty tasting lighter fluid. It's another video on my channel where I show you just how to do this. If you ever want to refresh a course. It's going to smoke a lot like that for a couple minutes as that paper down below is catching fire and getting going. What's gonna happen is heat actually builds up underneath there and sucks air in down here and catches all this on fire. 
And you know what? Uh, some of my friends would be like, man, I, I didn't think it was going to take off. It was just like smoking and it wasn't doing anything. But watch. Two, three minutes later, you got some good fire in there. And about uh, usually 15 minutes later, all this charcoal inside here is uh, lit up and about ready to be used. It's pretty simple. Okay? Yeah, it's been about two minutes and you can see the smoke's cleared up a lot and it's crackling a lot in there. So that's heating up. That'll get going here pretty good. Thought I might show you a couple more tools that I use. Uh, if you don't have a good pair of barbecuing gloves, uh, these are really handy to have. Some, it's like a wooly type material here with some silicone for, for a grip. But I use these for handling all that hot coal because that thing is going to get hot. And uh, these help a lot. Uh, you want to have yourself a decent grill brush. I'll be using this to scrub these grates clean a little bit later. Thought this was kind of cool. My wife got me this cool little branding iron. And uh, you know when she got it for me, I was super excited at first because I thought she wanted me to use it on her. I've got my initials on there. <laughs> oh no, it's just so I can brand my steaks and stuff like that so I know which one's mine. I don't know. Anyway, super cool. <laughs> and uh, be back at this here in a minute. All right, the things look a little bit different right now. It did longer hair, different clothes. It's because they are. So um, I'm trying to do this where I'm actually filming a, a real live cook. Um, it has its ups and downs. One of it is you only get one one shot, one take. That's it. And sometimes things go wrong. And the day that um, I'm doing this, the rest of the video, most of the rest of the video, it was 109 degrees was the actual temperature for the day. It was hotter than hell. Today it's only like 100, so we're, we're, it's nice and cool. But um, anyways, the uh, when we were filming the part that I'm about to do right now, where I'm putting the, um, actually getting the, uh, the fire going in the firebox here, the uh, video camera failed. It uh, got too hot for it and shut down, so we lost all that footage. So I'm completely recreating that part. It's exactly the same thing that I, that I do on the entire process. It's, it's the same thing every time. So what I've got here is I've got the um, chimney full of lump charcoal. As you can see, it's uh, been burning for about 15 minutes now, and flames are coming out at the top. And right here at the top, it's all bunch of uh, flame and hot coal. We're not going to get the camera too close this time so we don't shut it down and lose it again. But um, this coal is now hot and ready to go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my heat gloves here. And I'm going to carefully, watch out for the sparks. Lump coal tends to spark a little bit when it's uh, burning like this. I'm just going to pour this into the burn pit burn that in the, in the fire box there. There we go. Now, a couple, couple of tools that I use to arrange the coals the way I want them. This is just a long, cheap screwdriver that I got at a hardware store. I don't even remember how to forever. I rarely ever use it, but it's just a really long screwdriver. Kind of makes a nice little poker for rearranging things. Um, also a pair of tongs actually just picked these up today so might notice a little difference in the rest of the video but i got these specifically just for moving coal so you can get in there and really rearrange so now that i've got the lump coal in here this is not all that's going in here besides the lump coal i'm going to add natural wood because i like cooking with natural wood Lump coal is very much like just burned down natural wood. But after this initial pile of lump coal, it's just going to be natural wood for the rest of the cook. So now that I've got that in there, I'm going to take a couple of these uh, splits that I've made here by cutting a couple of those logs in half and then just splitting them up like I showed you with the axe. I'm going to put these right down there on that hot bed of coals. And I'm even going to take one more piece. And I'm going to stick this piece over here, away from the coals. Tuck it off to the side there, so it doesn't catch fire. Sometimes they do catch fire if it gets really hot in there. And the vent over here is, is wide open as always. Now what's going to happen, it's going to take a minute, but that lump coal down there is going to catch this wood on fire. And it's going to take a minute. And um, 
see you can see all the smoke kind of smoldering out of it right now and you can see it catching fire over here pretty soon all that's going to be lit up and burning really good so i'm going to leave this lid open until that actually starts to happen As a matter of fact i'm going to open the drawer over here a little bit just to let a little extra air come in there i'm going to push the coal over a little bit so not too much fire is escaping up the side of the firebox and i'm just going to allow this wood to catch fire and i'm going to let it catch fully on fire before i close this lid now something that i want to emphasize one you always want to keep your air intake open here that's something that i i didn't really clarify too much in the last video but you really want to keep this wide open sometimes even open the drawer a little bit you want as much air to go in as possible and you also want to make sure that your exhaust is wide open the stack up uh, here on top of the barbecue you want to keep this one wide open also because you do not want what you don't want to do is you don't want to put those flames out and if you choke off the air over here or if you stop the airflow from moving through which is essentially the same as choking off the air over here then the wood will smolder instead of burn and see all the white smoke coming off right here in this area here and all this white smoke floating up well that's what happens when the wood is not combusting fully when it's not fully hot not fully combusting and if you stick your face above this smoke over here it's pretty nasty and it smells bad and this white smoke is what will ruin your barbecue it'll make your food taste like an ashtray and that's kind of gross and if but if this wood is burning at, at as hot as it can burn then your food is going to have a the, the proper barbecue flavor it's going to have that what we call a smoky taste but it's not really smoky taste it's actually more of the flavor of the wood that you're using like today we're using cherry wood and if you burn your wood right you get really good at burning your wood right what you're going to start to notice is that you can manipulate the flavor of your barbecue by changing the type of wood you use hickory tastes different than cherry and mesquite takes tastes different and and uh, almond tastes different and apple tastes different so oak tastes different you can do everything the exact same way with a piece of with a, a piece of meat same rubs same process and everything but all you do is change the wood and you will change the flavor of your barbecue so it, if you're going to let air flow in fully like this you might be wondering how do you control the temperature then how do you control the temperature of your cooking chamber well you control the temperature by controlling how much wood you have burning here so this wood right here all this is more wood i'll tell you right now it's more fuel than i need to reach my goal when i'm cooking which is about 250 degrees this wood right here is going to be enough to get this compartment up here to probably 300 to 350 degrees way too hot the gauge up top is probably going to read closer to 400 degrees actually right now it's my goal to get that gauge up to 400 degrees because i want this cooking chamber to get really nice and hot before i put food in it then i'm going to let it actually cool down to 250 degrees where i want it to be all i'm going to do to let it cool down is i'm going to let this wood burn away when this pile of wood here is reduced down to ashes and there's not much wood left then there's going to be less heat coming through here and so then i just have to be careful about how much wood i add the size of the split that i add and the number of splits that i add usually i'm only adding one and sometimes i add two it just kind of depends um, by watching the temperature so another thing is um the ash from the wood that's burning here as it gets really small it's going to start falling through this grate little trick that i learned and one of the reasons why i have this giant long screwdriver is it's really easy just to stick your screwdriver through one of these bottom holes and sweep it back and forth like this and that knocks down any ash that's underneath there so that you will always have good airflow moving in here and getting to your wood so your wood burns properly 
So I've actually never, even on a really long, like 16 hour cook, I've never had to remove this pan and empty the ashtray. I always just keep cooking until I'm done. So you can see it's fully on fire now, really hot. I'm gonna close that up. Now air is flowing in through the opening here and through the holes here. And you can see that smoke is coming out of the main cooking chamber. There's even a little bit of flames coming up over here. So the airflow is moving in the right direction. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. Now you can see that the smoke is rising and coming out of the smokestack here. So that's hot air and smoke. And notice that the smoke is, is not all that visible. It's pretty thin, kind of bluish in color. That's good. That means that your, your fire is fully combusting. So this gauge is gonna keep on rising. I'm gonna let it get up here to, uh, uh, my goal is to get over 400 degrees. So this cooking chamber is really, really hot. And um, then I'm just gonna let that wood pile burn down a little bit. And by that time, I'm gonna have my, my meat's gonna be ready to go on the grill. And um, I will add a little bit of wood as necessary. But I'm gonna keep the temperature um, down to 250 degrees right in that range. And that's where I'm going to be cooking. But right now, it's going to keep rising. See the gauge right here? It's going up. It's at uh, getting to 240. And it is climbing. And I'm going to let it keep on climbing until it gets up to over 400 degrees. All right, we've reached a really high temperature. We are at over 400, about 420 degrees. Smoke is rolling out of there really well. I popped open the side drawer just a little bit here to let a little bit more airflow go in there. Okay, this is way hotter than we're gonna be cooking with to start. I'll show you what it looks like inside the burn box. Oh, fire, lots of fire. Got an extra piece of wood over there getting nice and hot on standby, ready to go. Now that the temperature is up over 400 degrees, I'm gonna let inside everything here just get nice and hot. And then uh, after those grates are all nice and hot, you can see all the smoke rolling through here, heat flowing through there. Then I'm gonna start uh, scrubbing those clean. Right now is a good time to uh, crack open our beer and uh, do the final preparations on whatever it is you're gonna be throwing on your smoker. Okay, so the temperature right now is holding at about 460. It's way up there. That's nice. And um, this whole preheat process that you're going to do should take you anywhere from, anywhere from about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Letting this get really hot and then letting that charcoal bed that you create kind of burn down to where you can start using it for cooking. So what I'm going to do right now, now that these grates are all really nice and hot, is I'm going to give them each a good scrubbing. Got my just brush here that I picked up at Home Depot or Walmart or somewhere. And I'm just going to scrub off the crusties from the last cook. Now these grates are super hot. You see the fire coming through there licking the grates. That's good. That's what we want. Nice hot grates. I'm going to use my tool here to pick that up. Set that there. Move one over. Move the other one over. Set that down. Clean the next one. Whew. It's 109 degrees out here right now. Lied earlier. It's not going to be 105. It's 109. Hot smoke in your face is uh, a little rough on a 109 degree day, <laughs> but it's worth it. There we go. Rotate. This was the one that was the furthest away from the heat, and now it is closest, and it is hot. And it is good. So this is all part of what we call seasoning. Seasoning your cast iron grates. We've got oil and fat 
bits and stuff from previous cooks just burning and searing onto that surface. Give her the uh, final scrub down. There we go. We're looking good. So, all I'm going to do is close this back up. Oh, almost forgot. I like to give the upper one a little quick scrubbing too. I'm going to close this back up. Hoo wee Hot mama. Okay. Now, I'm going to just watch that gauge. And as that wood starts to burn down, that temperature is going to start to fall. And uh, it's going to start settling down. And then it'll be time to throw some meat on. All right, all that wood inside that burn box is starting to burn down. And uh, temperature is uh, starting to come down also. Still above 400 degrees gonna let that settle down but um, what I'm mostly concerned with is what the temperature is at the grate level where right where the meats gonna be the temperature gauge on this barbecue and most of your your offset smokers that have a gauge on the lid like this installed this factory install gauge it's always gonna be higher than what the temperature at the grate is that's simply because heat rises all that hot air is coming out of there going right up through here and out up there and it's going to build up on top and the sun's shining on and everything so it's just going to be hotter okay so what i'm going to use to um, show you the tools that i use to uh, look at the temperature at the grate level and also what the temperature is inside the meat so i got a couple of different probes that i use here i've got the uh, the maverick dual probe that i picked up at home depot and uh, you've got one probe here that you set on the grate, another probe here that you can stick inside your meat so you can see what the internal temperature is here. This thing stays outside here with the barbecue attached to these probes. This one here you can run around the house with you. It's a radio, so you got a pretty long range on it. Pretty much the identical product over here is by uh, Therm Pro. Again, you've got a remote that you can carry with you. You can program at different levels so it'll beep at you if uh, temperature is getting too high or too low or something like that and you've got the unit that goes outside here you got two of these probes that look just like this and clips so uh, you can stick it around your grate and that's what I'm gonna do right now actually see that here water's kind of bubbling over there along the edge it's nice and hot in there I try to do this one-handed I'm gonna stick this clip right in about right there Run this wire back through here. Stick this guy right through here. All right. Got the wire running. Just kind of underneath that hinge there. And I just leave this guy right here. And that's it. I'll close that up. And this thing is going to tell me how hot it is at the grate. 238. That's going to keep on climbing. But when it sells down to about 250, that's where I'm going to want to start cooking. Okay, so it's been about an hour and the temperature is getting closer to where we want it. Uh, showing about 340 right here on the gauge that's on the lid. And... Uh, 299 here on the probe. Let me show you what's going on in the firebox. Most of that wood is burned down. There's not much left. I use some tongs to rearrange it a little bit. Like it kind of closer to that side. Also going to throw down another log, set it inside over there so that gets nice and hot so that later on when I need it. I'm going to put it over here on the fire and it'll light on fire instantly. So I'm going to let this come down just a few more degrees. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and throw my ribs down and get her cooking. 
All right, temperature is now down where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and get these ribs on the grill. that up now all I'm gonna do is as needed I'm gonna just uh, take that hot piece of wood over there and move that over there to keep the temperature where I want it to be and uh, gonna be doing that for the next couple hours all right we're about a little over three hours into this cook and uh, Thankfully, I got a little shade going on now. It's in the afternoon. Temperature's holding right about where I want it to be. It's at uh, 249 right now, if you can see that. Thought I'd let you have a little peek at the firebox. Hot. That's what's going on there. A couple pieces of wood burning away. And uh, another piece of wood over there, really hot on standby. So I can move that over and get it burning too. A while ago, I wrapped up the ribs, and there they are, wrapped up and cooking away. I'm not going to get into that too much today, but what I am going to do right now is I am going to throw a kind of a small tri-tip on the grill also. Now, leaving the door open like this, the lid open like this, is something I don't normally do because you're just letting heat escape, but for the purposes of demonstrating what I'm doing here, that's what I'm doing. So, I'm trying not to touch this with my hands here. I'm going to put this rubbed, ready to go on the grill here. I'm going to put it over here on this side, kind of away from the heat. What I'm doing here is I'm doing a reverse sear tri tip. Now, that's a pretty small tri tip, like I said. So, I'm looking at keeping this on the, on the smoker here in the smoking chamber for about an hour. And uh, that should get it up a temp to temperature where I want it to be. I'm going to take my probe, my meat probe, and I'm going to uh, plug it into this thing and poke it into here. Now that probe, you're going to want to uh, not get it in too deep. You want it the, the tip of that probe to be right about in the middle and the kind of fattest part of the meat here. And uh, I'm going to wait for that to get up to about, a, say, about 105 degrees. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to show you how I'm actually going to put those those two grates right there uh, I'm gonna put them back in the uh, firebox here and let them get nice and hot right on top of right on top of the coals and I'm gonna sear the heck out of the outside of that thing to finish it off after it reaches the uh, internal temperature I'm going for kind of a rare medium rare on this thing so when you sear it like that and then you let it rest for a while the temperature is gonna come up come up a little bit more and uh, so on a, on a thin one like this is kind of tricky but um, I'm going for like I said like a medium medium rare all right, so now that's there. I'm going to uh, I'm going to close this up. I got to get that probe in there, but can't do it one-handed, so I'll come back to that. All right, like I said, I inserted the probe into the tri-tip, running the wire out there, and that wire is plugged into this little guy right here, and that thing is transmitting. So the the screen is going to go back and forth between internal temperature of the meat and the uh, other probe there which is the grill temperature showing really low right now. Remember, because this lid is open and it's letting all the hot air escape. So, and uh, I'm gonna close that back up. There's still plenty of water in the pan down there. So we're looking good there. And here is my handheld there. And you'll see the temperature will start rising on the, uh, well, it went down because the lid was open. It's gonna come back up anyways. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just monitor that fire, make sure that it's burning well enough. And um, see, there it goes on its way back up already. And uh, add wood as needed. Let's have a look at it again right now. Matter of fact, just to give a little boost, how about we do that right now? Ooh, hot. Yep, that, that wood right here is burned down enough. So I'll break that apart a little bit. Take this one here. Whoops, dropped it in there. we go get that there I'm gonna put another piece 
over here to warm up. We'll close this up. You know, uh, somebody once asked me about these tongs here. These tongs are some uh, some pretty heavy duty badass tongs. They're actually probably like more than 50 years old. And uh, I didn't notice, but I, I use them to move around the coal because they're nice and long and strong. And uh, I also use them over there on the, the meat that I'm cooking. I usually clean, I, of course, usually, I always clean them off in between if I'm going between one or the other. But um, believe it or not, these things I've uh, been in the family for a really long time and they're super heavy duty. But uh, the question was, are you using tongs to to uh, move the, the hot burning coals and wood and stuff? So, yeah, yeah, actually the tongs work great for that. Get yourself a nice pair of the, the biggest, sturdiest tongs you can get. And that's a really good way to, to move your, your coals around. Sometimes I use uh, the little grabber thing from my barbecue, I mean, from my uh, fireplace in the house. That works great too. Um, but uh, yeah, just any any long tool like this, uh, the further you can get away from the fire, the better, so you're not burning yourself. And uh, it's got to be strong enough to where when you pick something up, even if it's a uh, big burning piece of wood like this, that it, you're not going to risk dropping it, burning yourself, catching your house on fire, or any of that stuff. Okay, you want to be safe. Okay, so that's burning. Temperature's coming up, and uh, going to let that cook in there for a while and move on to the next step which is going to be the searing portion and then I'm going to throw down some charcoal in the main cooking chamber here a little pile and we're going to do some uh, direct heat barbecuing of some chicken legs stay tuned all right so our tri-tip is up to temperature and I'm um, going to do something real fun real quick here Let's Thought I'd show you how the cool little gift that my wife got me works. Nice. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Set that down there. It's time to get this seared. So over here, I put the, the, the grates back into the uh, firebox there, and I've had them heating up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tri-tip here, and I'm going to put that down on that grate. I'm in nice and close here, a little closer over here. Now let's listen to this sizzle. There we go. All right, so I'm putting this tri-tip right down on top of that fire. And here's where I'm gonna to wanna to be careful because I put the fat side down first there. That's gonna cause that flame to, to flame up a little bit. Look at that, I already got some nice char going on there. Oh gosh, that smells good. So I'm just going to be careful to kind of move this around a little bit to make sure that it doesn't actually burn. I just want a good char. So I'm going to kind of roll it over the flame a little bit. Make sure I get the edges. This piece of meat is already up to the, uh, to the rare temperature, getting close to medium rare. Notice how Right along here, the, the, the fat is kind of starting to split a little bit. That, that's what happens when it gets really hot from the sear. So I'm just going to roll that around over that, uh, over that flame super close to the coals. Now this thing was uh, rubbed nicely with a uh, Montreal Steakhouse rub I happen to like on the tri-tip. So I'm going to be careful not to scrape any of that rub off. That's one of the nice things about doing a reverse sear is you don't uh, sear off a lot of that, um, a lot of your spices, your rub, in the cooking process. Roll that around there a little bit. There we go. Looking good. Flip that over. Now that fat's really catching fire there, so that's where you want to be careful. That's where these gloves come in nice and handy. Okay, be careful with the fire, because a fire will burn the meat and then you have a, a nasty taste. That wasn't long enough to do any damage, so we're looking good there. Look at that. I can tell by pressing on it, we're starting to move into the medium rare range. Every time, this how it comes out. Looking perfect. All right, I'm gonna take this off. There we go, set that there, gonna rest that. Move on with the rest of the cook. All right, so 
It's so hot out here, even my video recording device, AKA my cell phone, gave up on me and quit. So I had to throw her in the refrigerator for a second to cool it down. But uh, there is the finished product on that tri-tip. It came out looking beautiful. Nice char on it, smells delicious. Now, while my phone was cooling off, not only did it pull it off the grill, but I also went ahead and filled up another little chimney of charcoal, just regular charcoal starting to uh, light up right there. And uh, what I've got it on is I've got it on my char griller tabletop grill. Now I'm not gonna use this, but I'm only setting it there so I got something to start that on. You set this on whatever you want, but just remember it's gonna get hotter than hell down there. So if you put it on your concrete, you might do a little damage, okay? So watch that. Anyways, that's heating up over here. Sorry about all the movement. While that's doing that over there, I, I uh, took the grates out and I put a little more firewood back in there. So that's cooking up again. Grates are out. And I'm starting to unwrap the ribs and I thought, hey, maybe you might want to have a peek. So here are the ribs that were wrapped up in there. Looking really good. Look at those bones practically falling out of there. A little soft. So what I'm going to do right now, set this there, is I'm going to finish unwrapping these. And uh, that water pan is down below. It's hot, really hot. Fire's right there. I'm actually just going to tip this aluminum foil over and pour that juice off right down there into that water pan. This kind of easy way to not make a mess trying to get this out of there. And then very carefully see this. I don't know if you can see that in that view. Yeah, we got uh, meat just getting ready to fall off of that bone there. So I want to be careful here. There we go. Tip that over. Now, this is just going to sit in the heat and that meat's going to tighten up a little bit so it, uh, it's not too loose. Have a look at this one. If you got a lot on the grill, well, you got to change up what you're doing a little bit here. I probably wouldn't be able to uh, just pour these off into that water pan if I had four or five racks on here. Or maybe I could just rotate them. There we go. Another thing that I've done, I'm not doing it today, but I have kept the drippings that collect in this aluminum foil. And I use it to make a uh, sauce to rub on the ribs after they've been cut up. So I've spread on the ribs and man, it's something. I'm not going to tell you what's all in that sauce that was in this bag here, but um, oh man, I wish you could smell it. Look at that. Look at those bones. Look how beautiful that is. Yeah, that's looking good. So, next tricky part is I'm going to let these sit here for a little bit. I'm going to come back and put a little extra sauce on them. But what I'm going to do here in a minute, after those um, cook up a little bit more, is I'm going to move these over, put them up here, whatever, take them off maybe completely, and I'm going to take a couple grates out of the way, I'm going to get that water pan, I'm going to pull it out of there, charcoal is going to be ready, I'm going to dump down a pile of charcoal uh, right over here in this area. And I'm going to put the chicken down near the charcoal, but not directly over it. And I'm going to start cooking that chicken. So I want you to see that transition of how we go from smoking slow and low. Threw in that reverse sear tri-tip. Used the side fire box for, for searing that. And uh, then go into some traditional direct heat grilling of some chicken.
All right, stay tuned. All right, these ribs, these ribs are ready to come off. And uh, I already got the chicken on too, but I haven't put down the coal yet. I just put the chicken over here, it's on standby. I sauced up these ribs, we like our ribs a little saucy. And there we go, that one's coming off. This one I'm going to want to be super careful with. This one is literally just barely holding it together. Oh, come on. Can I get it all in one piece? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Barely. Man, that is tender. And that is looking good. Okay. Set that aside. Look a little sauce off my fingers that so just rubbed on there. Okay. Great. Now, I'm going to want my heat gloves back on here for this part. These things are worth their weight in gold. Take this grate off. Oh, I want to eat that piece of meat that's right there. You see that? Oh. Uh. Doggy gets up and if it falls off. Take off the probe. Don't need that anymore. Right. Get the probe out of the way. Okay, water pan. Water pan's got to come out. Oh yeah. Now with that water pan, be super careful taking it out if you're doing this because there's boiling hot water in there <laughs> and it's sloshing around this big wide pan. It would be real easy to spill it on yourself and you would do some serious damage. So please be super careful, be responsible doing that or just don't do it, leave it there, okay? All right, here, yeah. now. A little more fire for some direct grilling. This is a little more charcoal than I need. But that's okay. Alright, tongs are gonna. No, I'm gonna leave those tongs there. Alright, so I'm gonna spread this charcoal around a little bit, but I'm gonna keep it off to a side. those grates back in. I'm going to raise this up one notch. Okay. Now, now we are in direct heat grilling mode. Okay, so at this point, it doesn't really matter whether or not the lid to the firebox over here is open or closed. I'm gonna open it. Just let that finish burning out. And the chicken, I wanna let that cook up a little bit really close to the heat, but not on the heat for now. So I'm just gonna close that lid just like it is. I'm going to give that chicken a few minutes like that, okay? All right, chicken's been in there for a few minutes, way off to the side, away from the heat, and uh, looking good. Let's go ahead and move them over, get them right up there. These aren't going to take too long to cook. So I'm just going to be careful not to get them too hot. But uh, what I'm going to do on these is going to rotate them around a little bit. Be careful not to let them get too charred up, too hot, but just move them in a little bit closer to the heat so it starts cooking in there a little quicker. And uh, these will be ready to go in 20, 30 minutes. 
All right, so this chicken is done. It's looking really good. And uh, I went ahead and threw a couple of jalapenos down, just kind of last minute thought here, and some, some mushrooms. Wanted to put them straight on the grill. I'll take those off. Oh, those mushrooms smell really good. Oh, almost lost it. There we go. All right. Oh yeah, this chicken's looking beautiful. Good thing that those uh, Therm Pro temperature. Oh, oh, lost one. There we go. Pretty tough. Hit the ground. They don't get damaged. Jalapenos looking good. Coming off. All right. Here's the finished product, and uh, it's a shame lost one of those legs, but hey, you know what? Our dog happy. Well, he's going to be even happier now. So, thought you might want to look at what we finished up here with. Now, these ribs, first of all, man, look at that. Just fall apart tender. Tender, tender, tender. They look amazing. This tri-tip, got grain going this way. And it's going to transition about right here. So let's cut right in the middle here. What do we end up with here? Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that. Rare all through here. Very slight little piece of well done on the very edge here. That is a beautifully cooked, perfect reverse sear tri-tip. Cut it against the grain this way. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Uh, this is going to be great. So, let's see this rib here. Mmm. 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 Okay. That was one bite. This right here makes this entire day of barbecuing in 105, 107 degree, whatever, so worth it. Mm. Tender, juicy, delicious. Mm. <laughs> mm. Now, I did all this just for to kind of record it so I get to enjoy all this <laughs> so let's um hmm, get a bite of this tri-tip here wow I'm just gonna take a corner off there <laughs> mm-hmm mm. Oh my gosh. Mmm. All right. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get me a bite of this jalapeno. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> There's a spicy one. Mmm. Mmm. I'm going to get a couple of me, get a couple more of those ribs. I'm going to get an ice cold beer. And I'm going to enjoy this feast this came out great Woo! <clears throat> so thanks again for watching oh one more thing I wanted to tell you real quick question come up about the char griller grand champ and I thought to myself you know what if this thing got struck by lightning and melted down to a pile of rubble would I go out and buy another one? Without a doubt, absolutely yes, I would. I'll tell you why. For 200 bucks, that thing is solid. Super versatile. Easy to work with. Mm. Makes amazing barbecue. 
and it was one of the best barbecues I've worked with. And super, and for anybody that's learning, you can't go wrong with this. You know, I could spend a little bit more money, get the uh, Char Grilla Grand Champ. Honestly, I don't see a need to do that. If you got the extra money to burn to, uh, to get the Grand Champ as your first, go for it. I know it's awesome. Because this thing is awesome. Um, I don't have any problems with it whatsoever. It is a fantastic rig. And um, if you can learn to barbecue well on this thing, you'll barbecue great on anything. And this is not a char griller commercial, okay? Um, I'm just being honest about what I think about this one. My, my, if I'm going to buy an expensive, more expensive offset smoker, I'm going to go with something really expensive, like a super thick gauged, uh, my wife is being very distracted right now, uh, three or four grand rig, big monster one. But uh, this thing right here, can't go wrong with it is solid it is awesome i'm happy i got it and it just goes to show that you don't need to spend a ton of money to be to produce some awesome barbecue heck you don't need to have a perfectly groomed yard you just need to um, have some patience you need to um, have some commitment to it and be willing to uh, experiment a little bit learn a little bit from folks that uh, have some experience with it and, um, and just have fun with it, you know. What I'm doing here when I'm videoing might look a little bit complicated or difficult. That's because I'm fumbling around with a stinking camera. Uh, I don't have a camera crew. But honestly, go with it, you know. And um, just have fun with it. On a day when I'm not uh, videoing, being out here working with this grill and uh, cooking different meats and veggies and fruits and all kinds of stuff, a pineapple, whatever, you know. Um, man, it's a blast having a few cold beers or a couple margaritas, whatever. It is an absolute blast, I love it. So um, if you have any questions about anything you saw here today, please uh, feel free to put that in the comments. If you have any comments, put that in there too. If you want to have any, you know, whatever. If you got some stupid comments, as I've seen some stupid comments, and if you're watching, I was gonna say, you, you know who you are, but I think there's a reason for your stupidity, and uh, I don't think self-awareness is one of them, so. <laughs> probably don't know who you are <laughs> anyways this has been a blast don't forget to hit that, that uh, subscribe button and maybe that notification bell too give me a thumbs up or thumbs down whatever floats your boat and uh, thank you very much for watching have fun